Have you ever dreamed of having a greenhouse where you could grow winter and summer without using anything but the sun? Today, we've got a really special treat for you. Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Jonathan. And I'm Nate Christensen from the Manti Homestead. And I'm Kyleen, and I am thrilled to be here today. So yesterday, we got in contact with Nate because of this fantastic, what is it, a geothermal, off-grid, off -grid <laughs> hybrid that we've had um, temperatures of less than zero degrees. And in here, it's what? It was 70, 80, 100? We What's were it doing in there? 90 plus right now, even though we are six degrees outside. And so for me, this is my dream. <laughs> and so I'm loving watching him on his channel as he's building this. And today I get to see it in person. So let's go on the Come tour. Come inside, let's show you the greenhouse. Okay, this is my dream come true. Now, Nate, tell us about this greenhouse. Like this is amazing. It's like a hundred feet long. And I can feel the sun. It feels so good. Yeah, it feels good on a day like today. And we're glad it feels good. We've kind of kept this under wraps since July. Uh, we got past the summer months when it was really hot. And could this perform off grid in the summer without burning things up? And it did. But I still felt like I couldn't really come out of the woodworks and tell you about it until we knew if it could perform in the winter. So we're excited to kind of just share our ideas, which are really a lot of ideas from a lot of smart people, all hybridized into one greenhouse. And do you love the birds? Okay, so we're going to take a little tour and we're going to let Nate tell us about some of the features of this greenhouse. And as you're looking at things, it is amazing what is growing here, considering it is February 1st, because this is the roughest time to grow real food in a greenhouse. And this looks amazing. Well, and for the record, the greenhouse looks a little bit sketchy compared to what it did a month and a half ago. So you got to come back in the summer because in the summer, this place does look like a tropical oasis. So Nate, tell us a little bit about this. We've got some grates here and I noticed there's a grate there and then we've got little, little air vents here. Tell us what's happening with this. Yeah, so there are quite a few ideas that we have been dreaming about and really tweaking for the last really several years. <laughs> and so it was just finally time last year to do it. So the, my main goal and my main purpose was to go off grid. I mean, I love all these greenhouses and the, you know, the, the fans and everything that are there. And, and we wanted to see how much we could do without that. Just because if we are trying to have sustainability in a time where maybe some of those utilities are gone, can a greenhouse perform? So you're gonna see a lot of ideas. We just threw maybe the, all of it, the kitchen sink at the whole project. <laughs> and so as a result, you have a lot of tubes and a lot of fun, interesting things along the way. One of the things, especially for the winter, is we wanted to have a floor of the greenhouse that could grow, that could have you know, a garden forest, that we could have you know, strawberries and kale and I think over here we got a lemon and we got yeah. a lime tree, just growing right here. And so we knew it was important for any of that cold, dense air that's resting on the, the greenhouse to, to fall away and to get away from my plant's feet. And so these cold air drops are just simply for that. That cold, dense air is going to fall. Cold sinks. Yep, cold what sinks. What a great idea. And the grate makes sure that everybody's safe. I like how your pathways have wood chips. Yeah. That it, looks awesome. Yeah, it's, it, it was super easy Like when we, when we created the pathway you know, we just brought in the wood chips on the earth and we're mulching, maybe making some soil. And the cold air drops are on that pathway because real estate's kind of expensive in here. We want to yeah. do the most we can with, with the spacing. Absolutely. Tell us where that cold air goes because obviously you can't keep putting cold air in so it's going somewhere. Yeah. To teach us. <laughs> well, the idea with our approach to this, um, we, we, we got from another greenhouse and, and we did a video just last night. So construction video number two, I hope that's okay to say, yes, but yes, okay. Please. We <laughs> just, highly encourage you to go and learn about this. Just this because awesome. that gets into the weeds if you want to. But so the, the cold drop is about two feet in diameter and then it goes down six feet. And then from there, there's an eight inch tube that goes underneath the ground and then it vents up 
uh, onto these vents in the like back. That. And so, so that just encourages that cold air to drop and a place for that warm air to go, encouraging more cold air down. Mm-hmm. And awesome. so we did a like smoke. Like convection kind? Yes, exactly. Okay. And we, we threw smoke bombs down there last night. <laughs> and so in that video, you'll watch those look like little smokes. Like the whole thing was just filled with smoke. I wasn't smoking Barkies. <laughs> We're lighting off fireworks in February. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Why not? So how many of these vents, I've noticed them all over the greenhouse. How many vents are there? Okay, so there's, there's eight of the cold air drops. And so that's one system to get rid of that cold air. And then there's, there's 12 different vents. I call them a geo vent that simply grab air from outside and take it under the ground eight feet so it feeds or inputs the greenhouse. So in the summertime, it'll take that hot air and it will just cool it down, take some of that hot edge off as it comes into the greenhouse. In the, in the winter, the same thing, but for the opposite reason. We've got, we were down negative six last night and these were still uh, bringing in outside air, but it wasn't bringing it in negative six. Right. So that's the whole point is to bring in that cold air. Let the earth do you a favor. So it comes into the greenhouse, not negative so six. So it moderates it in both directions. Yeah, exactly. That's yep. so perfect. Yeah, it benefits so both cool. ways. It was a lot of money in pipe, but I think that the, the front end cost is saving us a lot in heating and cooling bills forevermore. Yeah. So it looks like it's like a corrugated kind of yeah. pipe. Tell me about that. Yeah, How so, many inches in diameter are they? So the, the 12 pipes that are input, inputting from the geo vent, are, they're just six inch corrugated pipe, like drain pipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then for the cold air drops, we used eight inch. We just wanted a little bit more mass to see because our runs are only like 20 feet on those. And I wanted to hopefully have enough surface area that mother nature can do what it needs to for the exhaust. And I think that worked, you'll see from the video. Yeah. So eight inch on those. Now let's go over here for just a minute. And let's talk about the Wallapini design of this. Now for years, I have been researching the Wallapini design because I think there's a lot of merit to it. And that's where you, you sink the greenhouse, right? They call them under green greenhouse or yeah, underground greenhouses sometimes so that you can use the mass of the earth to help to regulate that temperature. Now you've implemented some of that design. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, a lot of smart people have done a lot of really cool designs and we're just piggybacking off of that, you know, taking great ideas wherever we could find them. So the greenhouse is sunk down 30 inches into the ground. And I'm telling you, that's one of the main drivers of this being successful summer and winter. You just get that constant earth core temperature and and tapping down into that just helps that. Two things that are happening right now, we have our glazing window at a 55 degree angle. Some people will go 45, some people in between 55. We just chose 55 and I don't have every scientific reason why that was good or bad. With that angle though, the one thing that was so rewarding, right when we got done, I mean, we're, a lot of this, we're winging it, you know? We felt very impressed and inspired and educated to just move forward. It's still nerve wracking, right? Yeah. So, so we get done in July and it was the intense part of summer. And it was so cool because right when we got done and we, and we put the metal roofing on, um, our shade line was, I don't know if you can see it, but right here, right in front of the first of our thermal mass, which is what you want. In the summer, you don't want this thing getting sun, nor the water barrels getting sun, because in the summer, you're battling heat big time. So in the winter time, though, it's different because the sun, instead of being straight above, like it does in the summer, um, in the winter, is coming over here. And now we're almost like a direct hit of sunlight. And that's why it's so warm in here, even though it's like six degrees outside, we're getting all the input from the sun. And that sun is warming up the thermal mass. It's warming up the grow bed. It's warming up the 2000 gallons of water and it's warming up the back cement wall. So let's talk a little bit about uh, about that thermal mass. Now, the reason we want thermal mass is because it retains that heat and then slowly releases it, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you've done several different things and the black, black is supposed to really encourage that to be absorbed, right? Yep. Instead of reflecting that heat. Yep. Um, so you've got your grow beds, instead of doing it out of wood or something, you've actually got forms, right? Concrete. Cement, yep. yep. And then you've got the barrels that are filled with water. And then behind that, you've got more cement. Yep. And it's all painted black, all for the thermal mass. Exactly. Yeah, so 
you can look at the ratings of thermal mass. You know, I mean, when you get into like rocks and concrete and water, those are just your best to retain that heat. A, a good example of that, uh, when I was testing and nerding out on the water. <laughs> so the water level was down just a little bit on those water barrels. And in the day where the water was not, I mean, it was burning hot. But in the nighttime, those things would cool off just like that. But down below where all that water was, it's, it's warming up slower, but it's warming up more fully. Mm -hmm. So it's retaining that water. So we can have nights like last night where we're in the negatives and you have this wall, the grow bed, the water, and the back wall all giving back some of that extra heat you had stored up during the day. Amazing. We're just saying, Mother Earth, help us out. Sunlight, help us out. I think that's great. And just to make it clear, this is 100 feet. This is beautiful. This is wonderful. Ha remind me how wide it was, 17 feet wide? Yeah, 17 feet. And 100 feet long. But you can take these same principles and use it on a much smaller scale. Yes, absolutely. It's all about understanding the principles and implementing them. Um, the cold sinks are, are really cool. And you can see these little vents everywhere. I'm, I'm seriously incredibly impressed. Um, and I have a feeling we might be looking at one of these <laughs> and it's going to be a lot of work, but, but worth you it. You got this. <laughs> I've been trying for years and studying for years and wanting it and dreaming, which has actually been a good thing because the more I study, the better off our final product will be. What other tips do you have for our audience about this? Talk a little bit about more about the temperature ranges and you've got some backup in case because you live in a place that's super cold we're talking zone five ish yeah right yep and so we get low very low temperatures like maybe even to minus 10 what's the lowest you get here yeah that's that's pretty much the lowest last night minus six i think was our our coldest that we've got all year and so on those nights you know you're just for this year where i'm really pushing to see what the performance is off grid you know you're kind of white knuckling it but but it's but it's okay, you know, that's why we put all the design, uh, you know, in, into it to see if it can perform through that. What was your, what was your you main question though? Just in case backups. Oh, backups, so you got yeah. some propane just in case, yeah, so, right? Yeah, so, well, and actually last, the last two nights, because we had negative four and negative six, the last two consecutive nights, we um, really want to baby our banana because I just <laughs> want, I mean, I'm not going to be here talking about celery. That would be Becca. <laughs> I want to talk about the passion fruit and the avocado and the pomegranates. <laughs> You know, that's, it's just kind of fun, you know, and I want to, I want to see if it can do it, but I've been pushing it all year. And so, um, last two nights I was able to try out my backup, which is okay. What on a cold night, if you start dipping below that 40, what are you going to do, Nate? You're going to lose all your plants. They were kind of expensive. No, I just went and turned my propane heaters on. I've got three of them with a backup propane tank and I just turned it up. So it would be about 31. I don't think they were on very much. I probably should have helped my banana plant out a little more. <laughs> but the point here is that there is a backup. So what if you get some wild weather? I mean, just ask Texas, you know, last, was it last year or two yeah. years ago? Out, yeah. of the, out of the normal yeah. stuff. We want to have backups. So that's one backup. We also have electric service. We could hook something up if we wanted to. This year's the year I'm just forcing it off grid. Next year we'll put in some automation. Excellent. Now, one of the things that I want to point out here is that if he wasn't growing a banana tree, it would be okay for it to dip down cooler, yeah, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, there's a lot of plants that really like that warmth, but if you're just talking about growing things yep. to survive and vegetables that are cold hardy, your broccoli and your cauliflower and your kale and who wants to eat those anyway? I understand why he wants to eat the bananas. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there. Now, now, John, here he goes bringing up the Swiss chard, right? Absolutely. He is the Swiss chard man. Really? Okay. Oh, man. Next time you come, we'll hook you oh. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but there are, your choice of plants also dictates what level you need to keep your greenhouse at. But if we go through three weeks of storm without much sun, that can really impact this too. Yeah, and something that was, was exciting, and I, I documented it in some of my other videos, is we actually had a couple of weeks of just not this intense sun, cloud cover. You know, we were getting snow and the sun did not come out. And so we were, we were only warming up in the daytime, like 54 to 60 degrees in here, which today, if we close everything up, we could go easy over 110. Yeah. 
but we didn't have that sun. But we also didn't have the major low temperature, so we were still able to maintain above 40 without electricity, without propane, even though we had two weeks of, of the shadow, of the, of, the, of the cloudy sunlight. And he brings up a really good point, and that is the point of ventilation. Because if you lock all these guys up in here and don't ventilate, everything dies. Yep. And so ventilation is like critically, critically important. And one of the things that they showed me that they've done for the summer is on this sidewall there. In, well, you should explain it, Nate, because you're going to explain it much better than I am. So teach us about this. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's like greenhouses have kind of two major nemesis. I would say aphids <laughs> and in the summertime, massive heat. Mm -hmm. And so how do we get this to really perform without tons of fans, pulling tons of geothermal cooled air in. And it was just really simple. We, we, we put a 18 inch stem wall across the whole greenhouse and we have an insulated curtain that goes down. So right now it's all sealed up and it will be sealed up all through these cold, cold months. In the summer, we're gonna roll that up and we keep it rolled up the whole time. We have a little screen on there so my cat <laughs> <laughs> won't come in here. So, so we roll that up and we have 18 inches by 103 feet of ventilation coming in and then we've got vents for that hot air that's rising that hot air just simply goes up 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 and then we open up the door the two windows the other door the other two windows air in hot air out and it, it can get you know 90s high 90s in here but with all that ventilation i'm telling you there's not a single plant that struggled that is so, so. cool that is so cool all right, so this is the tour and we're gonna create a couple more videos for you, but I would strongly encourage you to go and visit Nate at Manti Homestead. He's got this awesome new channel. Subscribe so that you can follow his journey and learn a lot from him because I know that I'm going to be doing that. Now for the question of the day, how long do you think it's gonna take before Jonathan has one of these <laughs> built for me? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.